We have been studying second order differential equations and the equations that we learned about are ones that all end in zero. So, uh, and those are known as homogeneous equations. Now, aside from the mathematical interest here, there is also a physics reason for ones that do not end in zero. So let's just have a look for a moment at the equation I introduced originally, which had f net minus f spring or plus whichever uh, uh, minus the drag force equaling zero. <clears throat> and so the net force is, uh, there is no additional force coming from a powered source, an additional source to drive the system. So what we get when this system is solved, as we've already learned, is some kind typically of a damped harmonic, assuming that the drag force is non-zero, <clears throat> because there's no energy to offset the drag force. But as you know, there are many oscillatory systems that run all the time, that have drag in them, even if we lubricate them, and by uh, driving them with a power source, uh, they maintain themselves. Even a car engine is like that. So systems like this, especially oscillatory systems that have a, a power source are known as typically as driven systems. This is also true in electrical uh, in information and systems and devices. It is very common uh, for electrical circuits to be driven with an oscillatory source. And if you have certain components in the system, in the electrical circuit, uh, capacitors and inductors and so on, you get almost exactly the same equation uh, other than constants that we are using here for a mass spring mechanical type oscillatory system. So it's important for us to be able to solve some of these. Uh, we're going to do the simplest kind, straightforward kind, but nevertheless uh, learn a little bit about how to solve these. <clears throat> So, first off, let's look at uh, some basic uh, thinking behind this. The solution to the homogeneous equation Uh, produces when substituted into the equation uh, a zero. So our solution y, let's say h, would be equal to c1. Um, well, let's do it another way. <coughs> We'll say that y of the uh, homogeneous equation is equal to y1 plus y2. And, and that's perfectly acceptable. However, uh, 0 does not equal this function except in, if t is infinity. So we need to have a, or negative infinity rather, um, we need to have another term that will satisfy this equation as well. So we see a third term that when substituted uh, will produce right-hand side <clears throat> we have to guess uh, at the type of function but this method Uh, the 
coefficient of this function if it is a solution. Now, whether I said it before or not, one of the cool things in difference equations is that if we get the full solution, which would be these two terms plus this third term we're looking for, then that is the solution and there isn't any other one. And so the uniqueness of solutions is important uh, when we do these things because you uh, solve a problem and then you maybe you're building a device or enforcing a policy based on the solution to this and you want to make sure that there isn't other ways to do the same thing. And this method is known as the method of undetermined coefficients. Now, in this case, because our differential equations that we're studying in this course are the simplest possible for second order, uh, in that we have constant coefficients in our equations at all times, uh, the method of undetermined coefficients is a perfectly legitimate um, level of complexity. There are other methods that are more involved when you have functions uh, as coefficients of the equation. But as I said in an earlier video, this would lead to some pretty extreme physical circumstances that would be well beyond the pale of what we might want to study in grade 12, even in the course as radical as AP Physics C. And so our strategy then will be to first solve the homogeneous case and then two solve the non-homogeneous case giving us that third term that we see. Now in this particular case the equation has been gently defined, and when we solve it, we should be able to factor and be able to take the roots very quickly. Now, don't get comfortable with that. I don't really worry about these things very much, and you can fully expect to have to use the quadratic formula when you solve your equations. Uh, even if there's two real answers, they may well be decimals. Okay, so the world doesn't factor, and you need to get used to that. So make sure the quadratic formula is something that you have in your mind or that you know how to get your calculator to do those things. Okay, so here we have our candidate solution for the homogeneous case. Uh, is y equals um, a, sorry, yeah, no, we don't need an a in this case, uh, e to the um, rx. We got t's this time, so e to the rt, okay? And so y double prime, y prime, pardon me, is going to be r e to the rt, and y double prime will be r squared e to the rt. And then I'm putting in substituting these into, and we'll, I guess we should have a little bit of uh, respect for this, so we're using one here. And so we're going to have r squared e to the rt minus 4r e to the rt minus 12 e to the rt is equal to 0. So we have e to the rt factored out and now we'll have r squared minus 4r minus 12 is equal to 0. And so <clears throat> this can be factored fairly easily e to the rt. So this implies of course that r squared minus 4r minus 12 equals 0, and furthermore, that <clears throat> because it's a negative r, then it will be r minus 6, 
and R plus 2. So we'll say R1 equals 6 and R2 equals negative 2. So our solution then for the homogeneous case <coughs> will be y is equal to constant 1 e to the 6r, 6t pardon me, plus constant 2 e to the minus 2t. Now these constants are evaluated when the initial conditions are provided. We don't have any initial conditions here, so we have only a general solution, but that's all right. Okay, so that was the finished then of the homogeneous case, and again, you're going to do this every time. The only difference is solving this quadratic equation might take a little more time than the elementary factoring I did here. So, uh, solve, so two then, uh, solving for the non-homogeneous term, we first guess that the candidate function uh, is e to the 2t. Oops, I said, uh, oh, sorry. That's also part of pardon me. Yeah, I just misread the question. My apologies. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to say y h is equal to a e to the 5t, <clears throat> where a is real. And so, as I said a minute ago, we have to decide what the function is, and this method will provide the value for the coefficient. So where you didn't have these two evaluated, this will force this one. And that's because if you think about it, this is explicitly stated here. And so we need to have um, uh, less generalities, if you will. <clears throat> okay, fair enough. So then we'll have y prime is gonna equal y prime eight, y h prime, let's say, it's gonna be five a, uh, e to the 5t and y <clears throat> double prime of h that is going to be 25a uh, e to the 5t. Now when we sub it in, we're going to sub those terms in here and combine them with the coefficients. When we evaluate the left side, we're looking for this, not zero. So let's see what happens. So we have, so substituting these into equation one. So we're gonna get 25 a e to the five t, and then minus four quantity, 5a e to the 5t. So once again, when you substitute things like this in, put the coefficient outside, put a set of parentheses and drop it in. Don't do the arithmetic ahead of time. Uh, it's, it's too many things happening here. And all, all you need is one trivial mistake and you're in trouble. So be careful, please. Try to find some disciplined ways so that uh, if we're gonna make a mistake, let's make it a good one, okay? And finally, the function proper, which is simply a e to the 5t. <clears throat> so let's see what this is equal to. So we'll factor out e to the 5t for now. And let's look at these coefficients. So we have 25a minus 20a <clears throat> minus 12a. And that's right looks like it okay so this is going to be equal then so 25 
Now we're down to 5, so negative 7. Negative 7a equals 3. I guess, yeah, that's all we can only have to think of the coefficients. And so then a So a then is equal to negative 3 over 7. If I haven't goofed it. Yes, because we're going to divide by the negative 7. So let's see. Um, then, so our complete solution y is equal to c1 e to the 60, right? Plus c2 e to the minus 2t. Uh, minus 3 sevenths e to the 5t. Now let's check and make sure because I've been going on my own here. This is always dangerous. And how about that? <clears throat> so for once I didn't make a board error. And we have now the solution to the full equation, this non-homogeneous differential equation. In a later lesson, video or two after this one, I want to give you two examples of a problem in first order equations and I'm going to give you a second example with this version uh, dealing with a case where the function is oscillatory instead of exponential. Okay, So it gives you a second chance to see uh, how that works and I deliberately chose the second one where the candidate function which we were successful here, actually fails, and we have to choose a second one. So this gives you a little bit of a taste of how it looks. Remember, too, whatever algebra engine you're using to help you with this course will solve these equations quite easily. So you can certainly check your work and see how you're getting along with these. Don't be afraid to make a few up and play around with it a little bit and uh, learn some of the properties of them. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoy these videos that are useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and tell a friend as I'm hoping to try and help as many young keen people of this subject as possible. Thank you.